Hello and welcome to Geology 110 IN. This is a geologic disasters in the environment. It includes a lecture and lab and everything here is online. And this is presented in a format called on your own time or asynchronous, which means that there are no dedicated meeting times for us. This is a on your own time. So information is presented here. You can access it when it's convenient for you. There are certainly uh, some deadlines and due dates you need to adhere to. But other than that, you have some control over how you're going to work your way through the content here. My name is Todd Luther. I'm going to be your instructor for this course. And the idea of this kind of intro video is just to show you how the course is laid out, kind of what your expectations are, and introduce you a little bit to Canvas if you've never used that before. And so Canvas is what we call learning management system, is the one we use here at Mesa Community College. And if you look at this main page here, so we're at the home page, you can see there's some navigation links to the far left. So these are kind of navigation links for Canvas in general. Your dashboard will show you all the courses that you have a Canvas module or a Canvas shell for. Courses, so you'll be in your individual courses. The calendar will show you due dates, so that can be useful. So you can kind of manage your time and see what's due, especially if you have multiple classes. And then the inbox is a way to email through Canvas. And for this course, and for me in particular, this is the best way for you to contact me. So certainly you can go through my Mesa email. But if you go through here, it'll also send a notification to my phone. And because this is an asynchronous course, you may be working on something at, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon or eight o'clock at night or whatever and I might not be sitting at my computer but I will have access to my phone and so you can email me and I'll get that notification and in that case I can respond fairly quickly and in some cases it's a quick fix that you're asking for something I can just do quickly on my phone in other cases it might be a little bigger but then at least I can acknowledge that I'm working on that for you and so like I said, this is the best way. You just click it and send me an email and you can get some uh, hopefully quick response time is basically what we're looking for here. Okay, so what you're going to do on this main page, of course, is watch the video, but then also look through the syllabus. And so you can see that there's some navigation links here. This is for this course in particular. And there's not a lot because there's not a lot of places you need to go. So the syllabus we'll look at really quickly. The modules is where you're going to spend most of your time for this course. So let's take a quick look at the syllabus. So you can see I have some office hours here. There's a phone number. I am on campus. If you happen to be on campus and you want to stop by and chat or ask questions, you can come by my office hours. And then a little bit about the course description. There isn't a required textbook. There is an online textbook for a physical geology class, but there is some overlap between that course and this course. And so we'll refer to that on occasion. Of course, we're going to be using Canvas for most of the stuff that we do. There is one thing that I need you to download. It is a free version of Google Earth. So there is some confusion typically here. Try not to make it confusing, but there's a lot of versions of Google Earth. There's a web-based version. There's an app on your phone or your tablet. You can't use these versions. You need the Google Earth desktop version, which installs on your laptop or desktop. It has a lot of extra stuff that the web version and the apps don't have and we need that to do our labs so that allows us to import data and look in the past where the other ones don't so click this link here to go to that page and you can download google earth and you'll be set if you're having some issues of course reach out to me and we'll figure that out for you how the course is designed is there are 16 modules because there's 16 weeks in this course each week you'll have a lecture component and a lab component. You'll need to complete both every week. 
And the content is made available every Monday at 6 a.m. So then you have the entire week until Sunday at midnight to complete the work. And so anytime during that time period, you can work on the assignments. And of course, it's always best not to wait to the very last minute. But that's, you know, how, how the, the information is going to be presented to you. And in the lecture part of the module, you'll have three things to complete. You'll have a main content section and a content quiz. This will typically be presented to you in a PowerPoint and then a video of a the overview of the of the PowerPoint of me lecturing over the PowerPoint. Sometimes there'll be some other readings available in that main content area. And then once you've gone through that content and you've kind of taken some notes and understand it, ask questions if need be, then you will take a timed quiz over that content. And of course, the idea of having a timed quiz is just to encourage you to look over the stuff before you take the quiz and not try to Google everything because it's time consuming. And so that's in theory trying to encourage you to, if you look over the content and you have a general understanding, the quizzes should be fine. There's also an article quiz. So there'll be an article related to the content that we're discussing in that module. And so you can go ahead and read through that article, take some notes, and then take a timed quiz over the article. And then finally, for the lecture component, you'll have a homework. And this homework is going to be a variety of things. It could be a video, it could be an activity, it could be additional questions that I want you to research. And so none of the homework things will be have a time limit on them. They'll all be something that you can do and take your time doing, whether it's watching a video or doing some research or writing a little essay or whatever. And so those are the three components for your lecture. And then for the lab, what you're going to do is you're going to have a lab assignment, an activity in Canvas, of course, related to the content that we're talking about. This will be set up in such a way that all of the questions and the activities that you'll be working on in the lab will be automatically graded when you've completed the activity and hit submit. Now, the idea behind that is that you will then need, you can retake that lab as many times as necessary to understand the content there. All right, so let's say you're working through and it's a piece of cake. You click everything, you get, you know, a 95% on the, on the lab. You feel good. All right, you're done. That's the score you will receive on the lab. If you get a 20%, maybe you need to go back and, and check out that lab. Okay, so you can keep going back through it. And the idea is that, of course, if you go through it and you don't understand it, and there's no time limit here as you're going through the lab. So if you pause and you want to reach out to me and ask me a question, you can do that. If you go through it and you get a, a grade that you're not happy with, then of course you can ask me questions and then just retake it and improve your score. So remember, obviously poor scores will affect your grade. But the other thing is there is a timed lab quiz over the content which if you understood the lab content will be fairly easy. But if you're just guessing willy nilly on the lab activity, then the lab quiz will be challenging. And because it's timed, you don't have time to Google everything. <laughs> and so it's basically the lab quiz is a check that you understood what we were doing in the lab activity, right? And together, those are, you know, 30% of your grade. So you know, you want to make sure you're putting in some effort there. So that's how the labs will work, right? So labs can be retaken. There's no time limit on that. The lab quiz is timed to kind of check your understanding of the lab activity that you just did. So basically, you're having five things, five assignments that you'll need to complete every week. And then you can see the percentages of everything. Attendance, you know, attendance is, you know, challenging online but basically i'll if you're not turning in assignments I'll consider that something related to not attending and so i'll reach out to you or you can reach out to me and if we have an issue we can hopefully work our way through that 
But if you're not turning assignments in, potentially you could be withdrawn. So you want to keep up on that. And if you run into any issues, just reach out to me so that I understand what's happening and we can work it out. Uh, you can be withdrawn or you can withdraw yourself. There's some other policies here that you can read through. The academic honesty is challenging on online courses. Of course, I use some time limits to try and kind of keep you honest per se, but you of course, not allowed to copy and paste things into quizzes or homeworks or or represent things that aren't your work considered plagiarism. These things are considered cheating and you can be, you know, dropped from the course or receive an F if this is something that you're doing. So be aware of the work that you're doing. You know, this work is supposed to be you doing the work and following the rules of the online course. If you have questions, you just need to ask and you can get yourself through the content for sure. And I'm really not thinking that you will struggle, that this is a super challenging course. Mostly it's the timing. The, the time management is going to be your the bane of your existence. So if you work on that, you'll be fine. And then there's some other things you can read through like typical syllabi have. And so make sure you read through a little more thoroughly so you understand everything. And then what you're going to do is if you go to the modules here, and this is, like I said, where you'll spend most of your time and where all the content is available to you, you can see you have this little intro here where there's a syllabus acknowledgement quiz. And you can also see that things are grayed out in the first module. Now, they are available to you, but they're blocked until you take the syllabus quiz. So once you take the quiz and acknowledge that you've read it and understood it, then this content will be made available to you and you can work your way through it. So let me just show you really fast. So you come in here, say, yes, I'd love to take the quiz. And of course I understand everything I read and I agree and everybody's happy and you submit it. There is another quiz to take if you so choose. It is just a place for you to write some information that you'd like me to have about you. It can just be in general. You want to tell me about yourself? Awesome. If you want to tell me about some issues you may have that may affect you during the course? Awesome. Or any other information you'd like to share with me that you think I should know, you can feel free to take this quiz. It's basically just a place you can type in that information. If you don't want to, great. You can just skip it. So if we go back to the modules here, we see that now the first page of each of the lecture and lab are available, but the rest is still grayed out. This is how it's going to be for all of the modules when they're unlocked. If you see a view, you have to click this before you can get to these. So you can't just go right to the quizzes because all the information you need is available on this first page. So if you click the first page, this is what you'll see for the lecture. There'll be a little intro video. It's three to five minutes. It's not like this horribly 20 minute long one I'm giving you right now, but it's just a quick little summary of what you're going to do for this module and any tips and tricks to help you work your way through and, you know, be more efficient in getting it done. So for the very first module that we're going to do, we're kind of just introducing you to environmental geology a lot of times and a lot of the content will be presented to you in a powerpoint format so there'll be a powerpoint you could download but there'll also be a video where i walk through the powerpoint like if i was lecturing in person where i had a powerpoint up on a screen and we were kind of talking about the slides and the content and things like that that'll be made available to you and that's the main way that you'll get a lot of your information for this very first one, I'm really just asking you to read this chapter about environmental geology. So just read through that. And that's the only thing that the main lecture quiz will cover. In subsequent modules, you'll have those PowerPoint files and videos that you can access. And that's how you'll get most of your content. But for this week, you're just going to read this quick chapter. You can take the quiz here once you've take, you know, read through, understood it, took some notes. You'll always have this lecture material here, an article. You'll have an article. In this case, it's a web-based article. Uh, Arizona Geological Surveys is hosted by uh, 
Arizona, University of Arizona, and they have some information about the different hazards that show up in Arizona. So I'm going to have you go to that and then read through some of the information there. And then you have a homework assignment. Every week you'll have a homework assignment and the homework assignments will vary. They can be anything from a video to a, another article to additional questions that I want you to research. They could even be a short little essay or something that I want you to write about or explain to me. And so in this case, we're going to learn a little bit about science in general. And so I'm asking you to read a little article or in this case it's a chapter from a geology book and so you read through that and you'll just answer the questions these first two are timed quizzes but none of the homework assignments have a time limit on them so you just have these three things to do for the main lecture and you're done with the lecture content and then you're going to come to the lab here and once again you'll need to view this first page before you can have access to the lab and the lab quiz but you can go ahead and click that Remember, you're going to need Google Earth, so you need to download that before you do the labs. Now, not all the labs are going to use Google Earth, the desktop version, but, you know, a certain percentage is are. So some labs will not use it at all. Some labs will use it for like 20%. But in this particular case, I want you to learn how to use it a little bit. So that's what we're introducing in this first lab. And so you can just go next here and then every lab will have a little tutorial just for itself and so you watch the tutorial hopefully it'll walk you through the lab how does this lab work where do i want you to link to what are some of the issues that you might run into using google earth and all that kind of stuff so make sure that you watch the little tutorials because i made those to help you but basically just to give you a feel for the labs here's how the labs work there's multiple choice questions is mostly what everything is here. You have to do some calculations. In some cases, it's going to ask you to download a file. When you're using Google Earth, the desktop version, there's these KMZ files that have data there. So you're going to download that and open it in Google Earth. And then that data is going to get imported into that Google Earth program. And then you can click on things to view that information. And then I ask you questions about that. And so this is what you're going to do for the remainder of this lab is get used to using Google Earth with an imported file. OK, and so you're just going to answer these. And like I said, when you're done and you hit submit, what's going to happen is you'll get a score. And then you can choose to retake it as many times as you'd like to improve your score. If you feel confident in your score and you understand the content, you're done. And then what you'll want to do is go ahead and take the lab quiz. So you can do that after you submit this. You'll see a next. Or you can jump back to modules. Say yes, we're going to leave. And you can see there's the quiz. And that's a timed quiz, remember, because we're basically testing your knowledge of the lab activity right so you can go ahead and take that so one two three four five so just five things every week so you have a full week to understand the content take the quizzes do the homework do the lab activity lab quiz along the way you ask as many questions as you feel necessary to help you understand the content and then you're just going to continue every Monday. You're going to see that this will unlock and then you'll click on the first to unlock the activities lab. You'll click on in here. You got to click on one, two, three, four of those before you can get to those because there's some learning that has to go on in this map reading lab because mostly what I try to do is the lecture and the lab are covering the same content. But for the second module, we have to learn a little bit about map reading because we use maps in our subsequent labs. And so we're going to learn a little about the Earth's interior, but the lab is just going to be on map reading. So there's some learning that needs to be done in these little links right here before you take the activity or do the activity, right? So that's why there's so many pages here. So you'll read through these, watch a little of the videos that are embedded in here to help you understand how to read topo maps and geologic maps. And then you can go ahead and do the activity. After that, the labs and the lectures should match up. Plate tectonics lecture, plate tectonics lab, 
rocks, rocks, and all that kind of stuff. So they'll all kind of sync up. So you'll basically learn some information in the lecture and try to apply it in the lab, which is what we typically try to do for our lecture and labs. The only other thing is there's a couple other places to stop by here. One is your grades. You should always be checking on your grades to make sure, one, I'm inputting them correctly, that you haven't missed something or you haven't received a zero for something. If that's the case, just go ahead and reach out to me and we'll figure out what's going on. And then there's also this announcements page. And so sometimes there's a change in the format, a change in the content, something might not be working or whatever. I'll put that out in an announcement and you can view that there. And so that's kind of how the course is going to work. Hopefully you were able to stick it out through the end and it, this made sense to you. But as always, if you're having any trouble understanding the content or even navigating through Canvas or even the course itself, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Remember, this is where you're going to live mostly. Everything you can kind of get through the course by just kind of going to the modules page and working your way through the content and then the quizzes. Right. So hopefully that's helpful. And once again, if you need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll help you out.